Good morning. I'm Dr. Tarlian. I'd like to show you a case of a 57-year-old female that's been complaining of pain in her legs when she walks. Uh, she's had treatment for this in the past and has developed a recurrent pain in both legs, um, more so on the left than on the right. Last week we treated her right leg um, with what we call laser atherectomy, and I'll explain that a little bit more in just a few minutes. And today we're going to treat her left leg. Um, her symptoms primarily are pain in her calf muscles and lower thighs when she walks. And this is primarily due to a decrease in blood flow to the calf muscles, which require increased blood flow and demand increased blood flow when she walks. And this is because she's developed a re-narrowing of the artery between her thigh and her knee. In just a minute, we'll show you a picture of what we're talking about. Right now, we're going to put a catheter inside her artery and take some pictures of her aorta, which is in the abdomen. Is this a merit wire? Yeah, it's four punches. Yeah. We're live. All right, little shot. There's a nice picture of her abdominal aorta. You can see one big pipe coming down, splitting into two. Symptoms are on the left side. The left side is on the right side of the screen. So what we're going to do is pass a wire over to the left side and then pass a catheter down the left side and take more pictures. This is again in the abdomen and we want to take pictures of the arteries in her leg, which is where she has most of her symptoms. And we've got the wire across and we're going to follow the wire down with x-ray. Okay, good. Flora. Now that artery that we're in is called the profunda artery. That goes into the thigh. We want to get into the blood vessel that goes down into the calf. I think you can see also at the bottom of the screen there's a metallic object right in the middle of the screen. That's a stent that's been placed there in the past. A lot of times these stents will form scar tissue on the inside and that scar tissue most likely is responsible for the recurrent symptoms. And you can see our catheter coming up and over to the other side. And we'll take some pictures here. Okay. And you can see the artery coming down splits in two toward the bottom of the screen. That's the external iliac artery splitting into what's called the profunda femoris, which goes to the thigh. And the one toward the middle part of the screen is called the superficial femoral artery. And so we're going to get our wire into the superficial femoral artery, pass our catheter down there, and take some pictures and see what's going on. Okay, and you can see there's some re-narrowing inside the top of the stent. Want to head further south? And you can see the flow through that area is quite sluggish, okay? You can see the severe narrowing in the artery toward the top of the screen. Head further south. And you can see the rest of the artery in the region of the knee. That's good. Looks pretty good. All right. Now we're going to get a wire up and over again. We're going to pass a different type of sheath, which is the device we use to wa uh, work through inside the artery, up and over. Can I have a six ansel zero? Live. Okay, and now we've got the wire across the area that's narrow. Okay, that's a six. Get the uh, laser ready also. We're going to use a laser to treat the area inside the stent that's re-narrowed. I should mention that the inside of the stent forms a different type of plaque buildup than the normal artery does the inside of the stent forms what we call intimal hyperplasia and that's basically a reaction to the metal that's inside the artery where scar tissue tends to form and that scar tissue can actually obstruct the inside of the artery 
And we're going to go after that today and treat that. A little shot, Brandy. Okay. Map that if you would. And go live. On the screen, you can see the markings of where the artery is. And we use the road map to make sure our wire is where we need it to be. And also, when we're treating narrowings in the arteries, we like to be able to see exactly where the narrowings are without having to keep giving the patient more and more contrast or dye, which can be, if you use too much of it, it can be toxic to the patient's kidneys. All right, head north, please, in the region of those stenoses. Do a shot there. Now we just took a good picture of the area of narrowing you can see in the stent. Now we're going to calibrate the laser. Ready? <clears throat> now we're going to advance our laser fiber and you'll be able to see it in just a minute as it comes up and over. You're on pulse, right? And we're going to treat the narrowings in the artery. You can see it at the very top of the screen, a little black mark. We're going to go nice and slow through that area. And the laser will vaporize the plaque inside the stent. Very good for treating this problem. Okay, let's back it out. Let's go up a little bit. Stay right where you are, Mandy. Go live. I'm gonna come up to the top there. Okay, can it? The laser tends to remove the intimal hyperplasia, which is the scar tissue inside the artery. And you tend to get a better result doing this versus putting more metal inside, which only will aggravate the amount of scar tissue that forms inside the artery. So a lot of times we can get away with just doing this and ballooning again, and you'll get a durable result with that. Now you want to go up on the laser? A lot of times we put stents in when there are suboptimal results after just treating with laser and balloon. Um, some people just use what we call drug-eluting balloons, which work pretty well, but they still have problems with recurrent narrowings. And a lot of times I think we get just as good a results with putting stents in versus using the balloons that elude drugs. One more pass here. Case by case basis is important. A lot of it's personal preference and physician experience, um, personal experience. Uh, I personally tend to get better results with stents than without. Uh, frequently we'll use drug-eluting balloons. Um, most of those patients I've also had come back with re-narrowings either in the same spot or different spots. So there's no real one recipe fits all for these type of, of situations. Like I said, a lot of it's personal preference and judgment as to what works best in individual situations. Now we're going to put a balloon in and dilate the artery. Go live. All right, now we're advanced the balloon, and the dot is the most furthest aspect of the balloon. See where the top dot is, please? Now we're going to inflate the balloon. Go live. And you can see there's a little bit of narrowing still inside the artery. We're going to dilate that slowly. Okay, give me 30 seconds on that. 
So right now we're dilating the artery with a balloon. Um, that tends to stretch the artery, pushes the plaque out of the way, and we'll see what type of angiographic result we have when we're done. You keep the balloon up for a while just so that the wall of the artery accommodates to the size of the balloon, tends to relax a little bit. The plaque also tends to be pushed up against the wall of the artery and takes a different shape rather than just short, frequent um, inflations. The other thing is there's a shear effect um, in the plaque so that if you go up slowly and you leave the balloon inflated for a long period of time, you tend to get less dissection within the artery wall. Now we're going to take a picture and see what we have. You can see the flow of contrast is much quicker now. You get a little more dye. Let's do another shot here. Okay. See, there's still a little bit of a narrowing right at the very top of the artery where the artery splits. We're going to touch that up with the balloon. The rest of the artery doesn't look too bad. I want to head a little further south. We're going to check the rest of the stented artery and see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. You can see how the artery, which is in the center of the screen, is nice and wide open. What we're going to do now is go back and treat the top part of the artery for a little bit longer and see if we can get that nice and wide open as well. Now we're going to inflate and treat the top part of the artery. Come up higher, Brandy. Center up on the higher. Yeah, right there. A little higher. So we inflate nice and slow. Bring it up to 8 to 10 atmospheres, which is when the balloon assumes its normal diameter. And we'll leave it there for about a minute. Now we're going to take a final image and see what we have. Again, we're looking at the top part of this artery. Ready? That looks pretty good. Off. I don't see much in the way of dissection. I think we can leave that alone and not stent it. Head north. Right now we're taking this sheath out and we're putting a shorter one in so that I can put a closure device in the groin. That'll close the artery in the common femoral artery area so that we can make sure that we have what we call hemostasis, which means no bleeding from the groin. Now we're going to put what we call a Minx closure device in. And this device has a little balloon on the end that we inflate. We pull the balloon back until you can see it. You can see a little black spot at the top of the screen. And then we pull the sheath back until it doesn't want to come out anymore. That's how we know the sheath and the balloon are up against the wall of the artery. Then we advance the device. And we apply the little bit of pressure on the plug. Now we just let this sit for 30 seconds, another 30 seconds or so. And then we'll take the device out and hopefully we'll have what we call hemostasis. Now we're going to take the balloon out that you saw that was inflated. We deflate the balloon, take it out, take the little straw out and put a little bit of pressure for a few minutes. So the beauty of what we just did is 20 years ago, the only real good option for her would have been a bypass. Most patients don't want to go through a bypass, primarily because it requires long recuperation periods, it's much more painful, and it doesn't always work. It's only probably about 60-65% effective at five years. This procedure can be done on an outpatient basis in an office setting, um, much less painful to the patient, and many patients have long-lasting symptomatic relief. So the techniques have evolved quite a bit over the years. Patients like it. Um, it offers a much lower risk therapy for disease that patients have in their legs. Um, things have evolved quite a bit over the years. And uh, as you saw, we're able to keep these arteries going for quite a while with what we call minimally invasive techniques.